Hey, what's up guys? The Google Street View Virtual Tour Profit series continues. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the super high importance of picking a niche. Picking a niche, what does that mean? What's a niche? Or sometimes it's called a niche. What's a niche? A, a, niche, a niche is just a, a category in a market. It, it is a specific market that we're gonna talk to, speak to, learn about, become an expert in, become a domain expert, and, and ultimately speak to specifically what their needs are so that we can help them win and from their objectives. Picking a niche is very important because if you try to target everybody, you're gonna target nobody. So, and, it, and this is like a really common mistake, I think, for a lot of people. I see it a lot in the software space. I see it a lot in the, for the new entrepreneur because we are typically not our niche. And a lot of folks who have a lot of success, they're kind of selling to themselves. They pick themselves as a niche, right? So at Cloud Panda, we, we pick the entrepreneur. We, we are entrepreneurs. We know what it's like to feel entrepreneurship and be it. Like that's one of our niches, right? It's really important to us because we can know we can help them. We know what their needs are. We know what their pains are. We know what it feels like to be a brand new entrepreneur or to be one that just has lots of things they wanna try and do because that's what entrepreneurships, uh, entrepreneurs do. Um, versus if you pick an industry, there's specific things that are important to them. And the way you determine if you have what's called product market fit is you interview your niche, okay? So pick a niche and then you gotta inter interview your niche, okay? So for example, let's say hypothetically, you were uh, gonna target realtors, okay? I don't love that market, but let's just say hypothetically you're gonna, you're gonna target them um, and wanna offer them services. Well, thinking about the when you, talk, when you, when you interview a real estate agent, do they always have an office? Are they sometimes a small shop? What's it look like to, their, what's their day-to-day -day look like? What's their emails look like? What does their objectives feel like each day? And you can, when you start to ask questions about what's, what's important to them, you realize what questions or what topics they get excited about and what questions and what topics just get them to be like, okay, that's all right, that's pretty cool. Because a lot of people will tell you something's really cool, but if they're not willing to take out their wallet and swipe the card and pay for it, then it doesn't matter if they think it's really cool. All we care about is transactions. So to achieve what's called product market fit, you must talk to a niche. You must pick a couple niches and narrow it down to one and focus on that one. In the future, can you roll out, you know, treat view, virtual tours, media, marketing services to other niches? Well, of course you can. You can target any niche you want. There's every every niche is helpful and, and, and can and we can find a way to apply it to that niche. But you want to start off with one because there's typically a repeatable message that will stick. And that repeatable message is what you're gonna use at scale. And of course, you're gonna leverage your case studies in the future. Say you pick the restaurant industry and you are selling the restaurants. Well, if you have a couple tours up that are doing really well and getting a ton of views, you can leverage those to the competitors. And you can even niche this down even further to say, not only am I in restaurants, I focus on Italian restaurants, or I focus on luxury restaurants, right? What are the top most expensive restaurants in the in the city of Houston, Texas, right? Well, if that's my niche, like that's probably gonna have a list of 100 I can focus on, and I can talk to their managers, I can talk to their owners, I can talk to their GMs and determine like, hey, what's the repeatable messaging that works, right? And so, so product market fits, really big deal. You have to pick a market, right? Your product can adjust and change, especially from a service side. That's why service businesses are so great it's because you can change the service whenever you want to. It's harder with a widget or a product to change the product or widget because typically they, they don't change much, right? They, it is what it is. But if you have a service, you can adapt and adjust your service, the product, to that market, right? So that's how you win. You win by adapting what the market needs, right? I'll give you a great example of this. And you just follow along my, my journey here. So, so Cloud Pano, we start Cloud Pano five years ago, and we're in the virtual tour space, and obviously the real estate space is a common use case for 360 virtual tours. It's really common, and actually it's been pretty well educated market. We also targeted the automotive industry, so we, we know what it's like to go into automotive, and we, we sell 360 spin software as well, where you can make spins of vehicles, and it's an amazing technology. We have a whole app and ecosystem uh, around that. Uh, what's interesting about both these niches is like they both kind of borrow a something for a period of time, and they sell at a margin, right? So whether it's a real estate broker or a realtor or a real estate person selling a home for a temporary six month period of time, or someone or dealership that has a, has a car for a period of time, they sell it to somebody else at a margin, right? You get to see what's important to that niche, right? And we, you know, would, would learn 
by talking to customers what's important to them, what's important to that customer, what makes them get excited, what makes them go, Rrr. I remember I, I, I sent out some VR headsets to, to five different different realtors and, and they thought, this is pretty cool, you know, but like VR is not in their future because contracts and listings, that's what they care about, getting big transactions done because they can take their cut, right? Walking around with VR headsets wasn't their priority, right? But if you go into a place like Brass Pro, you can go shop a vacation by putting on a VR headset and looking around the space because they're selling vacations, they're selling stuff in Bass Pro Shop, right? So you have to know when it when what and when and what applies and how it applies to that customer, okay? So, in summary, once I or, or to to kind of go backwards, when I interviewed that customer, I, I found out what was important to him, what was not important to him. And, and then ultimately, where they already were spending money, right? If they're already spending money somewhere, I need to know that so I can plug into that budget that already exists. So if a restaurant is already paying a certain amount per month on social media, give me a piece, of, give me a cut of that, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll go make a 360 virtual tour of your space, right? Let's do that, and I'll take over your social media too as well, right? But if I don't, know what the niche really wants, what it needs, but I can't just guess. I don't own a restaurant. Me personally, Zach Calhoun doesn't own a restaurant. So I have to go talk to restaurant owners and find out what's really important to them. Okay, so when I do that, then I go help them make something amazing, get them the results they're looking for, and I come back to my website and I start what's called copywriting. I, I write down in words the messaging that's gonna resonate with that niche, okay? This is a very important skill set, and you must master this, okay? It's easier to sell to a specific niche with, with a specific problem than it is to sell to a big everybody about everything. Super hard, doesn't work. You may think, it, it may, may think you're dumb or nobody wants your thing, but you're just not razor sharp enough, okay? So if you focus on, for example, I gave the example last time about churches, right? If you focus on marketing to churches, then all your language is gonna be around churches. That's it, that's what you're gonna be focused on. And that's what really matters. What matters is helping that customer achieve their goals in their language. And that's how you get people to become a lead and to connect with them because you have your product market fit. You pick the niche, you focused on it. Can you in the future remove and replace what that niche is and change up the language? Of course you can. Can you have more sub pages on your website that focus on other, other industries? Of course you can. But in general, you want to focus your effort so you can get more conversions. It's easier to sell more things to the same niche than it is to sell to every niche just a couple of things because you're not really sure what they really want, right? So keep that in mind. When you're building your value ladder and building your offers, you can think about that niche. Target them, focus on them. Go talk to 10 of them before you make a decision about this is my niche. It's a numbers game anyways, or just go get one sale and then decide, okay, that's my niche because I have one sale there. And that's okay too. Okay, so pick your niche, go get success, get a case study, and then write your language to that specific niche. Hope this is helpful. I'll see you in the next section.